Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today in episode four, we're going to cover security in the Horizon ecosystem with our special guest, James Schumann as well as co-host Ben Sherman. Before we get into that, we'll go ahead and get into the news. This month, we're thrilled to announce that Horizon Eon is now on its permanent testnet called Gobi. Check it out to begin preparing for launching your smart contracts on mainnet now. Testing this also comes with the opportunity to enter our bug bounty program co-hosted with Immunify which enables us to offer up to $75,000 in bounties to our community. We'll be discussing this further with our special guest and co-host later on in the show. We hope that you'll check out this brand new opportunity on our testnet. Now let's go ahead and welcome our guests. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today on episode four, we're gonna be discussing security on the Horizon ecosystem, as well as the new bug bounty program that was recently announced with the Gobi testnet launch for Eon. We're going to have our special co-host, Ben Sherman here, who you met in our previous episode. Thanks for having me. Ecstatic to be here. As well as our special guest, James Schumann, head of security at Horizon Labs. And since uh, you guys have not met James yet, let's go ahead and welcome him on. Uh, James, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Erica. Appreciate the intro there. Um, so yeah, so my name is James Schumann. You also hear me refer to as Jimmy. Um, I go by either, don't mind. Um, but I'm actually kind of a new addition here to the Ryzen Labs team. Um, so I've been here five months now. Uh, and I kind of came from more of a consultant background um, in a lot of different verticals. So I spent a lot of time in the DLD space, uh, also commercial SLED, which is uh, state and local education. Um, so I have a very wide range of experience when it comes to securing different types of organizations with you know different maturity cycles in their security um, portfolio. So I, uh, I joined because I really enjoyed um, the conversations I had with specifically Rob and Zane about um, where they were taking Horizon Labs and focusing more on kind of products and what we can do to kind of make the world better with Web3. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of my quick little introduction there. But that's an amazing background. Um, <laughs> but we're so excited to have you on today. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into our Q&A since I know everyone is super curious, especially about the bug bounty program that we have coming up. Um, so what I would really love to know is, can you like tell us more about how your role at Horizon Labs plays into the Horizon ecosystem? So my role here at Horizon Labs is really more as a guide. Uh, I look at security as a journey. We never really have a destination. We're always just kind of going down a path um, since, you know, it's ever changing. And so while I'm trying to guide uh, Horizon Labs down this path, is uh, there's a lot of different aspects that I have to look at from governance. Um, that's things like internal policies, processes. Uh, I also look at infrastructure security, so system hardening. Um, but for the ecosystem side of things, I really look at our application security side and our dev SecOps. And so what we can do there to kind of strengthen our ability to create uh, you know, secure and usable apps um, so that's kind of my role here um, from an ecosystem point of view. Um, I also help out with integrations. So I look at integrations from a security aspect, make sure that we're you know, joining and partnering with uh, secure projects and secure um, products that will you know, strengthen the ecosystem as a whole. Amazing. Um, and when you say, was it hardening? Could you repeat that one more time and then explain more about what uh, that means? Yeah, so system hardening is taking um, any kind of system uh, within the ego. This could be something as easy as a web application. Um, it could also be a smart contract, but making sure that we're using security best practices, um, you know, with that, whatever the, the threats are for that um, product or that system that we're looking at um, and trying to make it as secure as possible. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you clarifying for myself and I'm sure the community appreciates it as well. 
Um, okay, great. Um, and I think this next question would be really great for Ben to ask. Uh, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, just, I mean, you did. That was super informative. Um, as we go from, specifically on like the Horizon ecosystem, as we go from testnet to mainnet, I know that you've put together this bug bounty program for Gobi, which has just launched, which we'll get into here a little more in depth. But how do you envision that your role is changing? Because I know right now you're, you're not exactly a one-man team, but as we grow this ecosystem, do you imagine uh, those tasks like expanding? I know you spoke about reviewing integrations. I'm sure that'll be, be a big part of it as we bring on more protocols. Um, I guess, how do you see that role expanding as the ecosystem grows? Yeah, so the the testnet is, uh, I look at testnet as completely different than, than mainnet, and mainly because we're trying to find issues, we're trying to find vulnerabilities, we're trying to see how we can make the system better, um, and utilizing our community, right, for, for help. Um, we also use, you know, the bug bounty program and some other things, um, some other um, systems in place that we can help to try to determine if, if there's anything that we're missing, right? And so it's really just fleshing it out, making sure that we didn't over, you know, no oversights or anything like that. Where mainnet, it starts coming down to more of detecting um, and monitoring. Um, so we're trying to monitor more often and trying to really determine if there's any active attacks going on. Let's say somebody's trying to take down some nodes or something like that, being able to detect that and then respond accordingly. So in the security world, uh, that's more operations where testnet would be more what I would consider like an information systems group or a engineering group, a specific security engineering group that's looking at that. So um, we're looking to growing out, you know, both those areas uh, within uh, Horizon Labs. And when growing that out, is it augmenting the team? Uh, what's the the kind of final vision that you have for that? So it's it's a couple different ways. Um, the first one that we've already started on was really just implementing security champions within the development teams. Um, and so these are individuals that are empowered um, within the dev teams to kind of take a look at things from a security aspect and trying to you know push best security best practices. Um, they're also a really good bridge, a communication bridge between the security group and the development team, just because there's always there's always stuff going on in the development team and the security might not always be exactly aware, aware of what's going on. So we want to make sure that communication is, is really solid between the groups um, and that security champions can really help out with that. Um, the other aspect is, yeah, growing the security group as needed, um, going from, you know, the team that we have now. Uh, adding a few people and just as a shameless plug here, I'm actually looking for a security intern for this summer. So if anybody out there is interested, um, please reach out to me uh, Discord. I'm on Discord. Uh, Sivo84 is my uh, handle on Discord. So please reach out to me if you're interested. Very interesting. And we'll be sure to add his Discord tag in the description below in case you are interested in that position. Um, that sounds really, really exciting. And, and it is clearly a really interesting and exciting time for the Verizon ecosystem itself. Uh, could you possibly tell us more about building the new Eon bug bounty program? Yeah, so the first thing I did, and I went back and looked at our last um, bug bounty program that we actually did with HackerOne and really try to determine what was successful, what, what worked, what didn't. Um, and one of the things that I was kind of thinking or review when I was reviewing, I was thinking that this was maybe not the right um, community to work with just because HackerOne is great, by the way, don't don't get me wrong, but they are very much more of a traditional um, hacker group. Um, so they're looking at web applications and um, just, you know, more typical type of uh, uh, applications and systems out there. So since this bug bounty is focused around our blockchain, la uh, layer one blockchain, we really wanted to try to get a community that was more focused on that type of technology. Um, and so we kind of went down uh, looking at multiple different, you know, bug bounty program partners. Um, and we did land on Aminify, which is uh, very focused on the Web3 space. Uh, so then it was working with them to help, to, you know, figuring out what's the right um, pathway for a test net because this is a test net bug bounty. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't creating any kind of like excess um, problems or anything with it. So 
we really um, worked with them and they provided a lot of insight on kind of how to try to get more uh, participation within our bug bounty program. So that was kind of the big um, push there. And then maybe we could hop into the specifics of it regarding the uh, bug bounty. And from my understanding, this bug bounty is currently for Gobi. And then in addition, there will be a separate one for mainnet once it launches, if you wanted to kind of get more into specifics. Correct. Yeah. So for the Gobi bug bounty, the specifics there, we're covering uh, multiple impacts. So we're looking at impacts for payouts, basically is the way it works. And so we're only doing critical and high impacts for Gobi, um, just because it has a test net. And so it's a 75,000 payout for any kind of critical. Um, and if you go to the Immunify website and look at the bug bounty, you'll see what the actual impacts are. I think there's five in the critical and one of them is like loss of user funds would be one. Um, so it's all determined on the impacts. Um, and then our highs are 25K payout, and there's a couple different uh, impacts that we're looking at for highs. Um, so that's kind of the the, the nutshell of, of the, the Gobi bug bounty. Um, now, when we move to more of a mainnet uh, long-term bug bounty that we're going to have, um, that's going to be, we're going to cover down all the impacts there. So low, medium, high, critical. Um, and then, but the payouts will be a little bit lower. Um, but we're also expecting less, um, uh, hopefully less uh, findings within that group. Um, but yeah, so really, we're just trying to really incentivize right now the uh, the, Go the Gobi um, bug bounty. Um, and so that's why our incentives are a little bit higher than normal. It's very cool. Um, and is that something that, well, I have to imagine that that would have to run all the way up until mainnet launch? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The, the plan is to run Gobi, um, the bug bounty for Bo Gobi until mainnet launch. Um, and then we'll move to the mainnet bug bounty and the uh, the gobi will be discontinued at that point and then i probably the last question for me um in regards to i understand like going with immunify very web3 focused community that makes sense um was there any specific reason though that you went with them over like say a surtech or some of the others um, honestly, it was the the partnership. So just talking to them, uh, our account manager over there, um, they were very open um, to any questions that I had. Um, we walked through a lot of different scenarios. They were just very accommodating when it came to working with us, um, where it seemed like we were a little bit um, not as as close with the other ones, let's put it that way. So um, working with the menu file was, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it was very uh, very smooth process. Um, it was very simple. Um, we like the uh, payout structure with the impacts. Um, I think that creates much more of a flexible and open bug bounty instead of having like specific tasks that we're looking for you to do and then finding any kind of issues with those tasks. Um, I really wanted to have more of a kind of an open field that says, hey, here's our repos. Here's our uh, here's the areas that we're interested in. Here's all of our documentation that we have. Here's our you know test faucet, everything. You guys go out and just figure out what you guys can do, and then you guys bring back any kind of issues that you see. Um, I think that was kind of one of the biggest um, pieces that I really liked about the Minify um, program. Nice. Sounds like a uh, possible future interview there, Erica. If we could only we could get them on. I would absolutely love to have them on. I think that would be super interesting. I do have one follow up question, Jimmy. Um, so what is the process of checking the bug bounties that are submitted to us look like? Yeah, so we do have an SLA. So we usually review and respond within 24 hours uh, is the uh, the goal there. Um, and so I'll get an email um, or uh, another person from our team. And then what we'll do is we'll review um, the findings. Um, now, I do want to kind of say up front that there is a requirement for a uh, proof of concept. So if you do find something, um, you got to actually prove that the vulnerability is actually exploitable. It's just not a vulnerability that it, sometimes there's other security controls in place that'll actually block uh, vulnerability from being exploited. So we just want to make sure that we, you know, it's an actual good find. Um, but once we verify the, the POC um, with our engineering group, um, and then the payout would go out um, directly from us to the hacker. Um, and Minified is not actually, we're not paying Minified, they're paying them. Um, so the, the transaction or the payout is actually between us and the hacker. So, Are there any other um, requirements on that submission? 
There is, there's a, a know your customer requirement since we are a US based uh, customer uh, or a company. Um, we are required to have a certain level of knowledge of who we're paying um, out to. So there is, you know, we got it basically what it is is name, address, and then proof of residency. Um, and this doesn't mean that you have to be in the United States to get a payout. It just means we got to have that information before we can pay out. But even if you're in Europe or Italy or wherever, um, you know, we, you can get the payouts that way too. So yeah, that makes sense, of course. Um, so that kind of ends all of the questions that I had specifically about the program. Is there anything that you uh, might like to touch on, though, regarding uh, security or the bug bounty? Um, no, I, I'm. I appreciate the time of jumping on here and having this conversation about it and actually sharing this with the community because if if the community doesn't get involved with the bug bounty, then it's really kind of worthless. Um, it's just kind of sitting out there, not really being beneficial to us. Um, but the big thing with the bug bounty is, is we really want it to be beneficial to us and the community or the hackers. And so we really want some involvement, especially from our existing Zen community. Um, they provide a lot of feedback and information. And so for those developers that feel like they uh, have the knowledge and the expertise and creativity to kind of attack, um, you know, uh, the the Gobi testnet. I mean, here's your chance. Uh, go for it. I definitely would like and love to see more people get involved with these um, bug bounties. And so that's kind of my last kind of say on that. You heard it from Jimmy. He wants to give you our money. Go get it. <laughs> Just Gobi testnet. <laughs> 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 Steal all the tests, tests then that you want. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jimmy. It's been a real pleasure. Um, and as we mentioned, the bug bounty program was launched with our Gobi test net. So we'll be linking all of the information below. Uh, go ahead, give it a check out, try and steal our test zen as Jimmy suggests. And uh, we look forward to seeing what everybody in the community does. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thank you for having me, Erica. And uh, great job, Jimmy. This, this sounds like it's going to be a good time. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.